Good evening, I'm Stacey Amos for News Channel 8, and these are the top stories that we have for you tonight. Another violent weekend on St. Croix leaves a man shot five times. Filthy conditions and noise in the Rainbow Beach area. A Caribbean Olympian athlete has been sent home. And an anti-bullying campaign you don't want to miss. Those stories and more up next for you on News Channel 8. tonight, violence continues to rise on St. Croix as another young man fights for his life. News Channel 8's Wes Small files this report from Estate Glen. Thank you very much, Stacy. Uh, last night it was around 945 where we have a young man we believe in his 20s and he took at least five shots. He was operated on overnight. We believe he's in critical condition, possibly downgraded by now. I've called Juan Louis Hospital and we're trying to get some information. Details are sketchy and you know I'm not going to get into where he was shot, but we do know that he was shot somewhere in this vicinity. He was taken by private and ambulance to Juan Louis Hospital. We do know that. And he is fighting for his life. But like I said, we believe he took some substantial kidney damage. This is unofficial. And he went through an operation with surgeons overnight. If you know anything about this incident that happened here in Glen at 15 minutes before 10 o'clock, then you should call 911 immediately, or you could call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. In Estate Glen, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. In other news, a national most wanted suspect has been arrested after he was discovered on St. Croix. Here's more of the story. An active nationwide manhunt for murder suspect Sama Chaka Quinlan is now closed thanks to the diligence of a detective in the Criminal Investigation Bureau on St. Croix. Quinlan was featured four months ago in March on America's Most Wanted, a show that profiles fugitives from justice and assists law enforcement in their capture. Quinlan is wanted in Greenville, South Carolina in Spartanburg County on charges of robbery, armed robbery, and first-degree murder. St. Croix detectives arrested Quinlan after they received a tip from a concerned citizen. He was arrested at about 12.30 p.m. on July 27th in the LBJ housing community in Christiansted. According to the information listed on the America's Most Wanted website, Quinlan regularly visited dating websites for men seeking men, and that is how, in July 2011, he connected with his victim, 20-year-old college student DeAndre Smith. Police in South Carolina know that Quinlan and DeAndre met, and later the victim was found shot and stabbed to death in his home. And thanks to the officers at the Virgin Islands Police Department, that case can now be closed. A suspect is in custody after he allegedly conned an elderly woman out of her money. VIPD spokesperson Melody Rames has more on this incident. Insular Investigation Bureau detectives arrested Jose A. Bermudez of Candido, Guadalupe Housing Community after he was identified by an 82-year-old senior citizen as the person who swindled her out of $2,500. Police believe that Bermudez has swindled other senior citizens out of their cash and encourage anyone who has been duped by Bermudez to call detectives and tell them what you know. According to the case agent, Bermudez encountered the victim in downtown Christiansted and told her that her car was smoking and it was inoperable, which was not true. The victim believed Bermudez and, at his suggestion, withdrew $2,500 from her account to pay for the fake repairs. Bermudez took the senior citizen to her home and later the victim became suspicious and called police. Police worked with the victim recording all of the pertinent information. And when Bermudez called the victim again, demanding additional cash, the victim called police without Bermudez's knowledge, and he was arrested outside the victim's residence. When police arrested Bermudez at about 1 p.m. on July 27th, he was in possession of 21 small bags of cocaine, two small bags of marijuana, and more than $1,000 in cash. Jose Bermudez is 31 years old, and he was arrested and charged with the possession of a controlled substance with intent to distribute. Police say Bermudez faces additional charges connected with the fraud. Bermudez was held on a $10,000 bail, which he was unable to post. He was remanded to the custody of the Golden Grove Adult Correctional Facility pending further court action. Bullying has become a major worldwide problem, especially involving our children. 
News Channel 8's Wes Small has more. We're talking about anti-bullying campaign that is really global. I don't have to tell you um, how bullying has come to the forefront. It's all over the world. Uh, just recently, off the top of my head, I can remember uh, a Japanese student in Japan committing suicide because she was bullied. And it's, it's happened even here in our territory in the Virgin Islands. These lovely youngsters have taken it upon themselves um, to talk about anti-bullying. And you've been seeing this public service announcement on Channel 8. And you are Miss Diaz. Angelica right? Diaz, yes. Angelica, yes. And you introduce your two friends here. This is Kiana and Kiara Christian. They're in my commercial for bullying. Right. Now, tell us, um, Angelica, what made you do this anti-bullying campaign? You want to share something that happened to you personally? And after they go, then I could tell something about what happened to me at Bergen Street School in North New Jersey. Yes, during my um, during junior year, I was being bullied, cyber and physically. I was choked. I was kicked, pushed. And um, I kind of, it hurt me inside, but the main reason I'm doing this is so kids can understand that it, it's best to ignore, even though it hurts, but you have to speak about it. And it's, it's, it scars you for life, but it's something you have to take upon yourself and actions that you have to be like, you know what, she's, she's not worth it, you know, she's jealous of me or stuff like that, but it scars you. And it still hurts me up to today, and I, I don't want kids to go through what I went through, so I wanted to bring awareness to bullying for that. All right. And if you Google this whole campaign or go online, you'll find out a lot about it, that you are not alone, sweetheart. This is a global thing, and it can affect you deeply, fatally even. All right, one more time, uh, say your name and what's your involvement in this anti-bullying campaign. Um, I'm Kiana Christian, and I'm doing it because she is my cousin. And I haven't been bullied personally, but I have seen multiple people in my school being bullied. And it hurts just as much to see younger children coming up and having older children bully them over and over again. And I'm just doing it because I want to also bring awareness that it's not right to bully someone that's younger than you or even older. And last but not least, we have? Kiara Christian. Yeah. I'm doing it because I know people that are bullied. And it hurts me because they're my friends, but I was never bullied. And she was bullied, and I could see it hurts her. And I want to let people know that we do care, and there are ways that we can stop this. Okay. Right now, I'd like to introduce to you that public service announcement that is running on WSVI ABC News Channel 8. They call me fat. They would trip me and kick me until I can't breathe. They spread rumors about me and post them online. They make me do their homework and take credit for it. Did you know that every 30 minutes, a teenager attempts suicide because of bullying? More than 282,000 students are attacked in high schools each month, and only 71% reports it and that cyberbullying is on the rise to dramatic numbers. But more than 100% can be put in to stop it. There are many ways to prevent bullying, but it starts when you speak up. Let's all stop bullying, because you never know when it can happen to you. This message brought to you by VI Talentless Talents. That was outstanding, and um, Talentless Talent. Who came up with that? It was a group. It was a music group that we started. Uh, after the bullying, you know, we um, were asked to do a competition for the Coral Reef rap. And I just came up with the name because uh, the same girls were like teasing us. They were like, oh, you guys are not talented. But yet t people were telling us we we're talented. So I was like kind of confused. So I was like, you know, we're talentless talents, you know. Okay. We got both. All right, get ready to get your pens and papers out so you can take down the website and any more information. But briefly, I could tell you I went through the same thing. I wasn't smart enough where people copied off my paper. If they did that, they would have gotten some bad. I, I really would have gotten it. But I was extorted for, l for lunch money. And, you know, that... Fortunately, um, I put a stop to it, but it, it does hurt, you know, and it can be a, a scary experience, especially when you've got bigger kids, tougher kids wanting your lunch every day, you know, I have to tell you. But I'm glad y'all have surfaced and, and weathered the storm. Now, how can I know a lot of students out there are being bullied or some bullies might want to change their lives? How can they get in contact with y'all organization? Hey, we can go to my website, it's www.vitalnestalents.com, and you can either message me I'll be there to speak to you and I posted some facts about bullying and websites some really good websites that you can go to and check them out and speak to them or me whichever one is comfortable with you guys girls are sweet you're very nice thank you very much good luck to you with all your careers what would you like to do with your career well um, so far I'm running an organi organization it hasn't really started yet but we're boosting it up and it's where kids we are talentless talents is where kids you know that has dreams can go and no one tells them no no one tells them otherwise and they you know they can be themselves around me. They can be themselves around everybody okay. else. You remember that rap enough to do it now? No. Okay, that's <laughs> nice. Carry that one. What would you like to do in your career? I like you. 
Well, um, right now I'm into photography, so I'm going to help her take pictures, help her go around, show people that even though people tell you you're not good enough, you are, and you should always continue to do what you, what you want to do. Always. Thank you. That's good <laughs> advice for me. But, and what, what about your career, sweetheart? What would you like to do after you graduate college? I want to be a marine biologist or a forensic scientist. So, like, I like nature, everything about nature. Yes. And I just want to help other people. Right on to learn other stuff. All right, and Angelica, you're, gonna, you're not gonna stop. You're gonna be doing some, like you just said, you're gonna be doing some future projects, and that means that News Channel 8 is gonna be partnering with you yes. the entire way, okay. Channel 8. So all you have to do is log into these websites that you see on the screen there, keep watching News Channel 8, and you're gonna see this anti-bullying campaign um, continue to grow, and any other initiatives you and your lovely friends are gonna have, all right? Okay, Keep Thank up you. the good work. Thank you. All right. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes. Coming up, a St. Kitts and Nevis athlete has been sent home from the Olympic Games. We'll tell you why in our Caribbean report. That's up next. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. Now here's your Caribbean report. From Barbados, Attorney General Adriel Braithwaite has outlined an ambitious agenda to tackle crime over the next few months, including the establishment of a drug court, as well as the introduction of legislation to fight corruption and improve the offshore financial sector. From the Dominican Republic, former Cincinnati Red Star pitcher Jose Rijo was indicted on charges of money laundering linked to alleged drug trafficker Mateus Avelino Castro. Castro was accused of ordering the killing of the journalist Jose Silvestre, an underworld murder that rocked the country. From Antigua, the government is considering several options as it determines how to proceed further in its dispute with the WTO over internet gaming. From Jamaica, a drought in the U.S. described as the worst in more than 50 years has forced Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller to issue instructions for urgent action to be taken to prevent a sharp increase in food prices in Jamaica. From the Caribbean, for over six months, more than 3,500 Caribbean men who have sex with men, confided about their sex lives while seated at their computers. UN AIDS Caribbean Regional Support Team Director Dr. Ernest Masaya presented preliminary findings of this study in Washington last week, which you can view on our Facebook page. From Trinidad and Tobago, the Indian High Commission has launched a center for Ayurveda following a growing interest in the Caribbean in the traditional Indian system of medicine. From Antigua, the Ministry of Agriculture has again teamed up with the CMC to launch this year's bi-local adventure. The initiative was unveiled on Friday and runs under the theme, Eat What We Grow, Use What We Produce. From Dominica, Venezuela is providing assistance to the country to help them deal with the outbreak of the deadly black cigatoka disease that affects banana plants. From Montserrat, 12 frogs in the UK breeding program who came from Montserrat where the chytrid fungus had ravaged the population have successfully reproduced. From St. Lucia, the fondue holiday plantation says St. Lucia must continue to diversify and tailor its marketing efforts by targeting communities of color especially those who have a voracious appetite for all things Caribbean. From the Dominican Republic, yesterday, Yamilet Peña became the first to attend the Olympic Games and reach the finals of the women's singles event. From Jamaica, Aaliyah Atkinson won the preliminary round heat on Sunday, but then needed a swim off, the first of its kind at the Olympic Games before she could reach Monday's final of the women's 100 meters breaststroke. From St. Kitts, record sprinter Tamika Williams has been sent home from the Olympic Games after revealing she had taken a banned substance. Williams, 20 is the Federation's 100 meter and 200 meter record holder. In your cricket update, Kamar Roach put the chains in motion before Chris Gale coolly navigated the West Indies to a nine wicket victory over New Zealand in the first test on Sunday. Please be sure to check our Facebook page for all full stories and details in the Caribbean Report. Now, noise and garbage has gotten the attention of residents in the Fredericksted area. News Channel 8's Wes Small has the details. Thanks a lot, Stacy. We are here at Rhythms and Rainbow, and we have a bit of a controversy going. As you can see from some of the pictures, we have a lot of restrictions for parking and so forth. And we've been coming to Rainbow for years, man. It's a, really a great place, especially on a Sunday, full of bikinis. And um, I'm here now with the go-to guy. He's everything here, uh, bartender and so forth, like the designated hitter. His name is Kenny Belez, uh Jr. And Kenny, you want to uh, have a little something to say about the controversy. You just want everything to go smooth sailing. 
Well, from that party that they say that Rainbow is responsible for all that trash down the beach, mm -hmm. in actuality, that was not nothing to do with Rainbow. That party was a completely separate party down the beach from Rainbow. Mm -hmm. Understand? So, with that being um, the problem, because usually that's what they're complaining about is the parking and the trash the leaving. Here. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the main problem here is the the trash leaving. It's just better for people to know that it wasn't Rainbow's fault. Yeah. It was more to say that that big party that they threw down there, yeah. they just left all their trash down there. Who threw the party? The National Guard? I, was that like that week ago? Yeah, that was a week ago. That was last week. It was a big party. Honestly, I don't know who threw the party, but I was serving that day, mm -hmm. and I was in the outer banner looking at it, and they were just going buck wild that day. Why? Well, I, I did talk to the other side of the coin, some DJs who um, put their uh, equipment out there and stuff. We're going to get to that, too, about the music. And they said the National Guard had had um, a beach party there and um, that, unfortunately, it was left a little dirty. And so extremely we have, dirty. Extremely dirty. Extremely dirty. It took at least three and a half hours for the supervisor and the manager to go out there and pick up all that trash. All right, now, what about the fact that some of the bands that you hire, y'all can't hear the bands because of some DJs farther down? Is that true, too? Yes. As a matter of fact, that same day for that same incident for that garbage, we couldn't hear our band. Our customers were complaining that the music from down the beach was a little bit too loud, and they couldn't hear the artists that we had up that day. So you could have lost a little revenue that day? Yeah, we could have. All right, you just want things, everybody to get along. Yeah, that's right? all I really want. I want this... Um, Rainbow Beach getting blamed for everything to just stop because it doesn't make no sense. We're just trying to give some good entertainment, you know? Yeah. We're just trying to do something good for the island, so. Well, obviously, the VIPD, um, like you saw in both newspapers today, they are in full effect. No parking oh, yeah. restrictions go all the way uh, all the from way that, the right, those yep. barriers all the way past you guys going around the corner there. They're actually going all the way past the residents that other the people won't park by the residents' houses anymore. So they maintain a VIP. PD police officer down the street with the barrier stopped and they had one right here and they were letting the people know not to be able not to park here. So you got some full cooperation then yeah. from the VIPD. Yes, we did. Here at Rhythms and Rainbow, I want to thank you, Kenny Velez Jr. very much. I'm Wes Small in Fredericksted for News Channel 8. Coming up, it's some local foods just for you. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. It seems as though we're seeing a lot of Kenefs and mangoes for sale these days on the road. New Shanley's West Mall has more on this story. We're here at Emancipation Gardens, yeah. Emancipation Drive. Look, my man just got a whole batch yeah. of Kenef. He's going to make a big eat. He's running away. <laughs> Honey Man is here. And you know what? It's all about self-sustenance and, and self sustaining ourselves. If you want some nice, juicy, sweet Kenefs, mm -hmm. this is the place to come. Yeah, man. All right, Honey Man, talk to us. How's business been and, and how's everything going? Well, it's been going good so far. Yeah. No? West is the best, you know. You get the best canep in the West. Yeah. We're West Mall too. You guys are open seven days a week. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Right underneath there, they've got like delicious mangoes. Yeah, man. And so forth and, and everything here. More fruits to come. Yeah. More provisions to mm -hmm. come um, as well. And and that's good during these hard economic times, yeah, my man. man. And you know, you see a lot of brothers out there, sisters and brothers with coconuts yeah. and canep, trying to make an honest living. Well, we got to make work. We can't look work. The government have no work for us. Yeah. You know, so we're making our own work, you know? Okay. Yeah, Let man. Let me ask you something. For this batch of canip right mm, here, mm. how much, like, for um for these? Two dollars a bunch. Yeah, man. You have a dollar, you can have a dollar. You have no money, you still eat free. That's how we do it in the West, you know? Everybody got to eat. Mm-mm-mm. Poor man going to eat. The rich man going to eat. You know, the regular guy going to eat. This Are is going to eat. This is delicious. Yeah, man. I've tasted some canips, yeah. but I think that the canips out West. Yeah are the best, just yeah, like my name. That's why I tell you, what's the best? The canep is the best. All right, you know how to send it home. Yeah. I'm busy eating, so mm. Stacy, my man Honey, honey Man here, he's gonna conclude it. Go ahead, yeah, you know how I do it. Yeah, man, right, yeah, man. Yeah, man, well, the best canep in the West, if you want to check it out, you know, from here, go up, different guys selling, you know, so if you really want to enjoy some canep, you gotta come to the West. Yeah, man. I'm West Small, 
with the honey man. Yeah, man. And I got stuff dripping all over my fingers because yeah, it's really sweet. Might not be thin, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm Wes Small for News Channeling.